Hey, how are you? This is Deborah. I'm with my Sheesh Shack. And let's take a trip and I'll kind of show you downstairs here. So we live in an RV and we're out in the middle of uh, nowhere. We moved out here and we love it. And since we've been here, we have uh, made my, my husband uh, decided that with all my many um, interest in crafts that I needed a shed or shack of my own. So we brought in a 40 foot um, shipping container and we kind of turned it in to my little place in the world. You know, guys have man caves and, and their shops and <coughs> excuse me, this is the door to all that turns out creative. That's where all the creativity um, starts. And um, like I said, it's 40 feet. Um, we had it delivered with the windows front and back and a sliding door. My husband added a little deck for me to come out and sit. And uh, we have our cameras and security and all that here. And then, you know, 40 feet when you do... I don't know, so many different crafts and and uh, art things that you enjoy doing. 40 feet, believe it or not, was not enough. So I do have a 20-foot overflow. Huh. Really, there's not a whole lot going on in there yet. It's basically just got a couch in there and um, some boxes, storage left over, whatever. But yeah, there are times when you live out here in the desert, there are certain crafts that you can't... Um, do because of the heat or the cold like my resin work I can't do right now because it gets really warm in the there even though um, even though it is insulated it still gets hot in there and uh, the resin wouldn't set well so this is my husband's play area this is the man cave guy area this is our water reserve and our fifth wheel and um, let's see, let's kind of just walk around. This is the back side of our RV that we're living in now. And I will insert a picture of the house we sold to move up to this beautiful God's territory up here. These are our water. This is our water. We have this filled uh, every five weeks or so. Um, each one is 275 gallons, and then we have to pump it into the RV, which takes 40 to 50 gallons. Um, we do have propane brought in. Not so much in the summer, because the only thing I use propane for out here is cooking or hot water. So, But in the wintertime, it's an expensive bill. This is the view from my front window of my RV. Um, yeah, this is what I get up and look at every day, and it's so beautiful. This over here, that's my mom's place. She bought the property, and we all moved up here together. This is my back view. Hi, little birdie. This is uh, the back side of my studio over here. This is my view. If you can see, I do have two nice big picture windows here that I put there intentionally to face this direction uh, so that's my inspirational view when I'm in there being creative this window is my Nomi station I decided to split my studio into stations it made it easier when unloading all my craft my mini Michaels you know mini Joann's that I have this is my um this is my where I paint so when I look out that window I see this for inspiration and about four or five times a day we have a train that goes across there and I love it because when we were down in the city we had no trains no train tracks didn't even hear a train or see a train but out here it it goes from I think California all the way through Nevada and up through Salt Lake all in that area so yeah this is my view out here so yeah the my she shed, um, shed it is just that it's I have days when I am creative and I have days when I go ah sheesh 
because something falls apart or I don't know, I spilled paint all over the floor, burned myself with the glue gun, you know, that kind of thing. So I decided it's more of a she shack on most days than it is a she shed. So I've been going back and forth with she shack, she shed, the she shed. So just ignore me when you hear me say it wrong because probably I'm going to continue to do that and editing it all out would just take me years. So anyhow, this is kind of it. Um, it's, we are on, I think maybe half an acre is all we took up. Um, the property goes out. I don't know if you can see out there. There's a little white post out there. It goes from there all the way over to clear over there. When we moved up here, we didn't have, um, we didn't have gravel. Um, we had nothing but sagebrush, so we had to bring in a skid steer and clear off the property. And we had road base delivered the first winter because, well, we've only been here six months, but we moved up here in the middle of winter. And, uh, yeah, the snow and, and the rain and all that left a big old muddy mess and we were getting stuck except when we're, we didn't get stuck in that particular vehicle, but my husband's pickup truck we did and uh, my mom's car got stuck so we had to bring in road base and gravel and um, we asked for half inch gravel I think delivered and we got this big old boulders like some of them are four inches so it makes it a bear to walk on so we just started driving over it back and forth back and forth and let me tell you that can be fun but you know it's um, to walk on it is crazy Phil. So then, after we did that, we had the Connexes, the first Connexes we had delivered, or the shipping containers, whatever you want to call them. Um, the 20 foot and the 40 foot from my husband's shop came first. Um, after we did that, we, he decided this was not what he wanted to lay on his back and work on the vehicles on. So uh, we decided to put cement slab down um, over here. So we got in his cement slab, um, put in a couple of little ramps here, and got his shop going so he could work on the vehicles because he does all his own repairs. We don't usually, unless it's a really major, um, have someone else work on our vehicles. So that came next. Um, like I said, that's where all of his shop supplies are. This one here, this short one here, this 20 footer on this side is, you can hear me huffing and puffing because walking over these walks, rock, these boulders is like walking on the beach, it takes it out of you. Um, this 20 foot here is mostly um, his, um, like his supplies and his stock. Oh, here comes the train. Here comes a train. He's way off in the distance and I have yet, can you hear it? I have yet to be able to figure out how to zoom in on GoPro, so if you want to teach me that, just put it down in the comments below and teach me how to zoom in while I'm, try to zoom in while I'm talking. I don't know how to do that, but, so let's, until he shows up, he's still quite a ways out there. He's moving on though. We'll talk about this 20 footer that we had delivered last week. This one here is for my overflow, like I said before and whatever else we might need. And eventually this is going to have an awning as well. He's gonna build me something over the top of this little patio he did me uh, to, you know, for shade or if it's raining and I wanna sit out here or whatever. Um, this little tent thing here that you're looking at, that is where his ATV sits. This over here, one day I will get into that, how much we paid for it what a disappointment it's been and I'll even announce at the time when I get it settled what company I bought it from so all I can tell you from looking at it don't buy one don't spend the money on it okay here's the train here's the train he's so cute I know trains aren't cute but to me they are because I was robbed of them for 22 years when I lived in California you know there was always train tracks and stuff but when we moved here to Utah I never got to see him so now I get to see it go right across the landscape. And it, it's just so cool. I'm sorry. 
who doesn't like trains? I mean, unless it's going through your backyard or your front yard or something or they've relocated you because of a train. I don't know why you wouldn't like trains. So anyway, there's my beautiful back landscape. Let's take a trip inside the shed so you can see. Sorry for the switching you around. So yes, we'll go inside the shed after I climb over the boulders. You know, I really had to learn to wear hiking boots out here. I'm sorry, but what we need to do is hire someone or go rent one of those things that crush gravel. <laughs> what are they called? Sheep, sheep's feet or something like that. Let's go in here. Let's go in here. Okay, here we go. So let's flip on some lights. Like I said, when we got this, we had them install the windows, the doors, and this man door that I just came through, and also electrical lighting because um, it was not good running a generator and all that good stuff. So it is hooked up to lighting. We had a box put in, which we had an electrician come out and run out to our poles. Um, when we did finally, when we first moved here, we did not have, um, we did not have electrical poles. We were running the RV off a generator and propane and solar panels. And we decided in the winter time up here, that's almost stupid because the, where we had to go get propane was like 22 miles away and uh in the in the winter time that was a drive in itself and then uh generator having to keep track of that and then if it's cloudy you don't get your solar it was too much so when we found out that we could actually put power poles up here we did my mom did and we all enjoy a power pole now so that's nice um but this is the end right here this is my food prep area yes we're preppers um, I try to stock food in the freezer. I try to keep stuff on the shelves. This table here is waiting for my freeze dryer from Harvest Right, which is, um, I think I'm still five weeks out or more from getting it. And then I'll start, um, getting the freeze dryer thing going because these over here, those are getting way expensive people. When I first bought the scrambled egg mix, it was, I think, $18.99 for that can, and now it's gone up to almost $60, bucks, 70 in some places. So freeze-drying my own stuff is going to be awesome. Um, I'm getting half a cow, well, a third of a half a cow. We bought half a cow, and we're splitting it with my mom and some friends. But as I was saying, we did, we are getting um, a third of a half a cow. <laughs> and so we're trying to get my freezer between now and hopefully next week cleaned out so I can put all my cow in there. But yeah, this is... And um, I put little room dividers in here to kind of separate my sections. This right here is my Nomi station, and that's my view. Uh, this is where all the fun Nomi's come from. This guy here, and as I was telling you, it gets hot in here. These fell off. It got so hot in here. It got so hot in here that it melted the glue, and I have to put poor Mr nature nate back together again and i will he'll get fixed but yeah this is my nomi section and i do have a divider here too these are the neatest room dividers they have little shelves on them i got those off amazon um to separate my areas this is my new nomi carpet isn't he isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen i got some fluffy rugs because i wanted it wild and crazy like i painted my cabinet um in wild and crazy I'm a 70s girl, I'm sorry, but I still like the 70s big old flower pow power, flower power, and the tie-dye, and that's me, I can't help it. I mean, look what I'm wearing today, okay? I mean, denim, and you know, I look like something lost in the 70s, right? Anyway, this here is my resin station, resin and my paint pouring. I found out paint pouring is a blast and the messier it is, the more fun it is. And so this is where I will be doing my resin work um, and all my resin stuff are in this particular section. But see what I mean when I split it up? If I were to just throw everything in one area, it would be harder to work on something or at least get interested in working in something. If I do it this way, I can say, okay, I, today I'm going to do resin. And I know that all my resin stuff is right here. I don't have to wander to and fro trying to find it. It's all where I need it to be. 
This is where I house my Nomi family. They're down in there, but the rest of this stuff up here is, you know, paint pouring and resin work and my mask and if you're gonna resin, please wear a mask. I have my coffee station. I am a coffee, power coffee drinker. So we had to have the coffee station and the toaster oven, you know, in case I want a snack, I don't feel like going in the house. And so we did this with the little refrigerator. Hi, Peanut. And, uh, you know, my supplies. I have to have my supplies. Then we purchased this. I don't know if, you, probably for those of you who camp, you know what this is. One of those um, portable sinks that you have to, you know, pump to get the water to come out. So, but it's great for filling up my water things for painting and washing my hands, putting water in my coffee pot and such. This is another room divider, so it separates. Oh, this is my split. I have air and heat on here, and I love it. It's It will keep things nice. It has kept things cool in here um, for me, but not sometimes, not so much, because it, it gets so hot. But, yeah, and then in the heater. I have used the heater early mornings. This is my paint area, where I had keep my brushes, and I found this cutest little... Um, paint. Well, it's not. It's actually a little drafting table that lifts. The top can go up and down. But I found it in pink and had to have it. So anyway, this is where I do my painting. There's my view out my paint window. My canvases, my crit. Well, my mom's Cricut and her paper stuff down there. This is an idea sample of some of my watercolor work. I think that one's acrylic. My mom did this one of me. I did this one of me. Isn't it funny how our selfies of ourselves are different? Um, this is, um, I believe that is paint. Um, my husband's, my husband's first Volkswagen, um, a little tractor that I painted. This one is watercolor. So yeah, I did um, the designs on the wall. I love that saying back there. Hello, sunshine, be bright, sunny, and positive. Spread seeds of happiness. Rise, shine, and hold your head high right? This is my felting area and my diamond painting area. And I sew here. So we brought this dinette set over from the house because it was useful. It's got storage under the seats. And so, yeah, my felting stuff. And this is, this is Stevie. I'm working on him right now, a felted llama. Um, I, in another video, you'll see my diamond paintings and some of my gnomes and whatever, but yeah, and then this here is my paints and my polymer. Of course, we have to do polymer clay as well. So we bought a polymer clay oven off a really super sweet person on Mercari.com. She sold it to me really at a great price, brand new, never been used. This here is my, this here, there's a sample of my resin work. Um, it's a basket. I did these bread coasters. They were wooden bread pieces and I did a set of six and did them in the sea, like a strawberry sea type thing. So that's a sample of some of my resin work, but this is kind of my office workstation slash where I sit and do my watercolor that I'm going to be working on with my Tombow pens and my water pens. If you haven't used those, those are awesome. Um, so yeah, this is kind of that area. This is Howie. He's my gnome. You know, you buy these and you put them behind your seat in the car, but I decided why waste them in my car? I can enjoy him in here. So anyways, that's that. I think that's about it. Um, the flooring, we bought this unit brand spanking new. Um, with, you know, and, and but we bought it also in a nine and a half foot high rather than an eight foot standard, eight foot shipping container, it's nine and a half feet. Um, I don't know if so much of that foot and a half makes a huge difference or if it was a deciding factor, but it was only, it wasn't that much more to get a brand new one rather than when it's all beat up from the shipping yard, you know, and from the docks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, that is kind of a rundown of of me, Deborah, or Brishy, as I'm known in on some sites, um, and what we're doing up here. I will do a separate video of um, all the other reasons why we moved here, and then obviously I'm going to share with you when I start to create things and stuff. But 
Real quick, because I know I'm going to get questions because I had questions when I first bought a 40 foot. I mean, you have this 40 foot container delivered to your property and, and it's all raw, except in my case, I was very lucky and had windows and stuff installed for me because I didn't want my husband to have to spend his retirement doing that kind of work. It's a lot of work. As it is, we did the framing in here and we did the um, insulation and the drywall. So we didn't drywall the ceiling and insulate the ceiling because they weigh, those pieces weigh like almost 100 pounds, 80 to 100 pounds a piece and lifting those up over your head, <laughs> heavy, you know, we're too old for that. So um, we didn't insulate and drywall the ceiling because the ceiling is like brand spanking new. Why would I want to? I, we'd have to have worked around the, the lights and the electrical wiring that goes from light to light, you know, and so we just, we didn't want to mess with that. So anywho, let's do, let's do a breakdown of um, what it cost and stuff. So the, the container itself was $7,700 brand new. Okay. That's with nothing. That's just a raw shipping container, 40 foot, eight feet by 40 feet. Then we added a sliding door then we added a man door that you saw me come in. We added the two large picture windows and the small, um, the small little window above my my watercolor desk. Okay, and then we added, um, we added. Oh, we bought the metal framing instead of wood for wood framing because metal framing much easier to handle. It's lighter weight, and you get to cut it. So the shipping container with the windows, doors, blah, 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 right, that I had it delivered was $11,882, okay, delivered. Then we put 1000 into the metal framing. We put 800 into drywall. We put uh, 800 into insulation. Um, we used the rolled installation, the silver stuff that looks like something you put in your window in the summertime, you know, only it was this closed cell. And that ended up costing, let's see, the insulation was 800 And then we had the electrical installed by the shipping container company. And they charged us $3,000 to run this through with um, four power outlets or plugs or whatever you want to call them on each side. And our light switch, the box, the lights above, the lights above my head that you saw, that was three grand. That's something else you can do on your own, or if you have someone in your family or know someone who can do that for you, hey, take advantage of that. Um, the electrician that we had to call to get us from this unit over to our power pole, that was $2,300. You had to dig a trench. It had to be down, I think, 18 inches um, to be decode. And so now I walk in, I flip on the light, and it runs off my power pole. Um, so the total cost of this unit without decorations, without the curtains and the flooring and, you know, the carpets came to $19,782. Now you break that down. If I had built myself a little hut, first of all, it probably wouldn't have been big enough Two, it would have been way more than that for something way smaller than this. So yeah, it was almost just, let's just call it 20 grand. That's what it was. And, but I love it. It's my place. It's my she cave, my girl cave, my lady cave, whatever you want to call that. She shed, she shack. It's mine. I have a place to come um, when I, um, you know, get tired of being in the house and there's nothing else to do. I come out here and sometimes I just come out here and sit. I just sit here at this desk and contemplate my world. And I look out there and I see my beautiful world and I'm glad that I moved up here. Um, well, let's see what else is there to discuss if you're going to sell a house and move out to you know rural wherever bill you that that you live rural bill somewhere in whatever state um plan on it you know my husband got to retire two and a half years early because we sold the house and were able to use some of that money to pay off um our bills so he was able i'm just like hey we don't have any bills anymore we're going to live up there Scott free basically everything's going to be paid for so why not retire he was a, a heavy equipment mechanic and he was getting tired physically his body was fighting him every day because that's a tough tough job he'd been doing it since he was 16 years old and he 
was very lucky at 62 to be able to retire. Um, that's a lot of years on your body with that kind of job. So we did, but you know, we came up here and um, used a lot of our money that we sold the house to pay the bills off and to buy the things that we needed up here to make us comfortable and enjoy this view and not be miserable. And we were very fortunate. We were not fortunate. We were blessed by God, seriously, to have the opportunity to do what we did. And if you're going to do something like this for yourself and it's something, you know, you dreamt of doing, then, hey, you know, sorry for the finger thing. Um, I say do it. If you can afford to do it and don't be afraid, just do it. You know, plan it. Plan it ahead, though. We did sketch this whole property out and between where mom um, was set up over there and what kind of space she needed. Then we took the other side, the other corner of the property and design it out first. Plan it. Write it down. Say, okay, I want my shop here. I want my RV here. I need my water there, my propane there. Um, find out whether or not you can get power because if, if you're an expert, a pro camper and stuff and you can deal with propane tanks and generators and, and solar lighting, hey, I give you a ton of credit because I couldn't. I'm I'm a city girl. I came from Southern California, okay? So to, um, being able to walk into a room and flip on a switch was important to me. It, being able to turn on my water, flush my toilet, and take a shower. My unit does have a washer dryer in it. Yes, I'm a spoiled brat. I'm sorry, but there's just some things that I have to have if I can. I mean, I've learned, I've learned through help of friends and family how to do without it if I have to, if the power goes out or, you know, for some stupid reason, I don't have those luxuries. I know how to live that way. I just prefer not to live that way. But those that do, you guys are awesome. You guys who are truly off the grid and making your way um, every day through what you have to go through, I, you guys are my heroes, seriously. That's a tough way to live. And those that do that, don't mess with them. They are tough people and they will put you in your place right now. They can handle themselves. So anyways, yes, we are preppers and yes, I am preparing for an EMP or I don't know, what is it they call it? Um, SHF event, a sh hits the fan type event. Yes, we're prepared and I know what to do. I have the books, I've watched the videos, I've practiced it. We have a plan B and a plan C, but, um, as for right now, I'm just enjoying what we have and what we've been blessed with by God and, and able to enjoy this. So I'm going to cut this um, off right about here. Thank you so much for choosing to at least watch this video. If you like it or you find that maybe I might be in, interesting in some way or another, um, subscribe to me, share me, uh, leave a comment. Um, I'll try to talk about different topics each time as I as I putter through my little station here and do my gnomes and and my paintings and felting whatever it is I'm doing that day I'll try to give you some kind of um, topic of the day or conversation or some kind of wise words so make sure you are coming up with the proper tools meaning your finances your vehicle your uh, mindset Mindset is very important when you come up here. Know that it's going to be tough. Know that it's not going to be, you know, downtown Abbey where everything is convenient and you just go. Um, I'm going into town, the big town today with my mom just to get an MRI for her. So it's an hour. I'll be leaving here in a minute just to take her into town and then it's an hour back. So it's, it's a long day. I come home, I'm tired. But anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate everything. Um, that I have up here and I appreciate all those who decide to subscribe to me and follow me and and give me some energy to move along. You guys take care of each other. Um, have a great day. Be safe out there and we will catch you on the other side. Bye.